Lord's really been dealing with me lately, and He's He's telling me to to stand for the truth and don't don't conform to what's going on out there. And the church needs to stand up for the truth and speak the truth. It doesn't mean we have to hate on these people. We can love on them, but let's not conform and let's speak the truth. We need to speak the truth or, or we're going to lose this country. And I ask the Lord, well, why me? I, I am a nobody. And I go back to Judges when Gideon is, <laughs> is being dealt with. And he's arguing back and forth to the Lord. And the Lord doesn't answer his question. The Lord just tells him. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have. So I'm realizing I don't need to try to be something that I'm not. I just need to go in the strength that I have. And don't grow weary doing good. Exactly. Too. Yes. It's a truth. It's a truth. That's a great, great story there. Yes. Speak the truth. Speak the truth in love, but speak the truth. You speak the truth. You don't have to. We, yeah. we, we can't sugarcoat it. We cannot sugarcoat it. We have to speak the truth. Yeah. And when you hear a lie, it's yeah. not wrong to confront it. No, it's yeah. not. It's yeah. never wrong to just confront it. And like I said, we don't have to do it in hate. No, oh, better not. No, we don't. We're do it. We do it in love. Yeah. We have to do it in love. Yeah. So, so it's. It's an exciting thing to depend on the Holy Spirit to fill you with that kind of love. Yeah. But I just love the way Gideon's trying to argue with oh, him, and he just, yeah. no, 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 just go. Yeah. Just go, go in this, your strength. Yeah, go what, in your own strength. What, what kind of strength is that? The Whatever's, one you have. The one what, you have. Whatever you got. Exactly. Do that. Yeah. Joyce Miner say, if you're afraid, do it afraid. Amen. <laughs> so. He's given us the strength. We just have to trust him. Yeah. This, uh, this phone isn't mine, so I'm gonna <laughs> let me get out of the way because Lana is gonna come and share the word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, Mr. Mike Taylor, that was really a good word that you just gave us. It opens up to what the Lord gave me. When Pastor Matt asked me to speak, the Lord had already given me a word before he ever asked. So I'm really excited to share. And I want to share one other thing. The last worships before I share the word. The worship, the last worship song we sang, can y'all hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, the last worship song we sang, you know why the Lord sometimes, even oftentimes, speaks in that quiet, still voice? What do you have to do to hear somebody who's speaking quietly? You have to listen. You have to be quiet yourself, and you have to draw close. Draw close. So the Lord really wants us to, to draw close to him. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Father God, we just thank you again for who you are. We thank you for what you've already done. It is a complete work, and we thank you for that. We thank you for what you're doing right now and what you will do. Holy Spirit, we invite you here. Thank you for meeting us in that place of worship. Thank you that you meet us now in the place of your perfect word. That the words that you've given me, Lord, will come through even better than they went in and touch every heart here. Holy Spirit, come. You are invited. We've all come to hear from you. So speak, Lord. We are listening. Amen. 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 So, um... Sometimes Pastor Matt lets us speak on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights, so I've done that a few times. What I've never done is shared the same word twice until now. The Holy Spirit really, really, really put it on my heart to share this word that I spoke about three years ago. And when I brought it out, because they're usually dated, I realized that it was almost two weeks prior to when we shut our doors temporarily because of what was going on, two weeks prior. And now it's three years later, three
three years later. So there's significance in that. And he showed me that he repeats things in the word oftentimes, right? Yes. And so when he does that, when he repeats things, he really wants us to listen up, Amen. I feel like. Yes. So let's go, let's go. So this is about fighting like a Christian, fighting that good fight of faith. Because just as Mike said, we've all been talking about lately, or at least we're aware, right, of the heightened um, level of battle around us. But this message isn't really about the battle so much. It's about how we fight and how we win and how we maintain and grow in our relationships, our relationship to the Lord first and foremost, and then our relationship to each other. Praise God. So I think it's important that we look at, first of all, what are we fighting for? We have to know what we're fighting for, right? We have to know who we're fighting. Who are we fighting? We have to know why. Why are we even fighting? Why are we in a battle? And then, how do we fight? So that's what we're going to look at today. So turn with me to 1 Timothy 6.12. 1 Timothy 6.12. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Timothy 6.12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Amen? Amen. So that's what we're fighting for. The good fight of faith. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus Christ, right? Yes. But we also know that we have an enemy. <clears throat> Satan. And we know what he does. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's the truth. And it's important to know that. Amen? Turn to James 4, 7. James 4, 7. Because this word tells us to deal, how to deal with his sorry self. And he is sorry. He's not sorry as in repentant. I mean, he's, it's his sorry self. He's just, you know what I mean? Praise the Lord. So James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen? Amen? I think it's really important, the order, everything in God's word is important. Pastor Matt is hot. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's really important, I think, the order of the words in Scripture. God puts them in a specific order. So the first thing is what? Submit yourselves to God. Before we can resist the devil, we have to be submitted to the Lord. Amen? Amen. So submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and then he will flee. Praise the Lord. So that's how we deal with him. Well, you also know that we have our own flesh to deal with, right? We each have our own flesh. And the word talks about our flesh in Galatians 5.24. So let's go to Galatians 5.24 and see how to deal with our sorry flesh. Because just like, at least for me, I don't put too much distinction between the enemy and my flesh. I just don't, because I know me, and I know without the Lord. So... My flesh is sorry, too, just like the devil is a sorry soul. So um, where were we? Galatians 5.24 says, And those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Our flesh is already crucified because of Jesus Christ. It's already dead. So when our stinking flesh tries to rise up, we can remind it. You speak to your flesh, reminded that it's already dead in Christ and has no rule over you anymore. Amen. Amen. Amen? So I feel like the Lord was saying the enemy, and sometimes even our own flesh, that's who we're fighting. That's the who. 
right? Amen? <laughs> and you notice that the word never says to fight people. Never ever does the word that I can see say to fight people. So let's go to Ephesians 6, 12. Ephesians 6, 12. For we do not wrestle with against flesh and blood. That's people, referring to people. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's right? right? Yes. Amen. 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 It says we don't wrestle with people, but we wrestle with darkness. So we need to remember that even though when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we received everything from him at that moment. That's true. But we have to live here in this fallen hot mess of a world, right? And so we have to contend for it here. How? By faith, right? Faith in Jesus. It says in John 16, 33, you can go there if you like. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Right? Amen. So that's the why we have to fight. That's the why we have to fight, I believe, is because in this world we're going to have troubles. And it talks about the end times. It's going to get darker and more evil. But we know <laughs> that the light wins. Yes. We already have victory. That's right. Amen? So that's what we keep proclaiming. That's why we have to fight. And then finally, how to fight. How do we do all this? How do we fight the good fight of faith? Fight like a Christian. And that's my favorite part because anytime I have to do something, I want to know how. Amen. The best way. Not my way or your way, God's way, the best way. So <clears throat> that's what we're going to be talking about most of all is how we fight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And it's really what we are all doing here. You know, praise the Lord. Hopefully this is just encouragement to what you already know and what you're doing, both here corporately and on the streets, when you're shopping or when you're at work, in your private time, all the time, yes. right? Yes. Everywhere we go, the Lord equips us. And so what we do, how we fight, is we seek God's face, we stay in his word, we pray, we worship. Oh man, how powerful is worship? And it really is about much more than just singing songs. That's a big part of it. But our whole life, it's more of a heart posture towards the Lord yes. is what worship is. So our lives are worship unto him. We stay and we live in his presence. Y'all know that you can live in the Lord's presence. Yes. You don't, it's not a coming in and a going out based on circumstances or even your own feelings. Yes. He's in there always. You can live in his presence right in the middle of chaos and darkness. Yes. Amen? Amen? That's when we need him. That's right. We always need him. Um, and stay in community with like-minded people. Yes. I love the church so much. This one in particular. But the church, the big C church, the corporate global church, and it's God's idea. This church is it's the Lord's idea. He set it up this way. We need each other. Don't ever try to do it alone. And anybody that's listening, if you're trying to do it alone, if you've, if you've stepped out of church, come back, come back, come back, and get planted where God tells you to be planted. Amen. It's crucial. And we trust God, and we stay dependent on him, completely submitted to him no matter what. That's how we fight, right? Yes. Amen? Amen? 
Thank you, Lord. So, um, oh, praise the Lord. Now, there, I have, God is so good. Like I said, I, I gave this like three years ago, but then when I sat down to be with the Lord and hear what he had, even though this was already there, he, of course, gave me more, right? So I've got, if you saw my notes, I have arrows and, and all additions because that's how Holy Spirit is, right? So even with all that I said, how to fight, there will be times when we are called to come against and rebuke and cast out in Jesus' name. There will be those times. Amen? But I believe that's supposed to be the shortest amount of time in the battle the shortest amount of the time. The longest part of the battle where we really should remain is in praise and prayer. Where our prayers equal praise and our praise equals prayer. Amen? Amen. So I want to read something to you really quick that I found. I don't even know where. The Lord brought it to me. It's called Glory Warfare. This is a time of war and a time of victory. We, you, are a worshiper. You were born to worship. Judah goes first before every battle. Exalt the Lord. Lift up a standard, a banner of praise. As you arise in worship and exalt the King of Kings, the glory comes. The presence of God comes like a glory cloud and hovers over you, protecting you like a ring of fire. Come on. The presence of the Lord makes the darkness shake and tremble. It's the presence of the Lord, y'all, makes the darkness shake and tremble. You have the key of victory. War from the heavenlies, from your seated place of victory in Christ. Fear and darkness have no hold on you. You are a mighty warrior. Your worship causes the enemy to tremble. Worship in the warfare. Worship in the warfare. In it. Right in the face of it. Worship. Amen. And release his glory on the earth. That's what releases his glory on the earth. The Lion of Judah, King Jesus, has all the victory. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. So we already referenced scripture, right, that tells us how to deal with Satan in our own flesh. And another scripture that I love concerning the fight and how we fight is in Ephesians 6, 13, and 18. So let's go there. Ephesians 6, 13, and 18. <laughs> It says, <clears throat> therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, yeah. that you would be able to stand in the evil day. Sometimes I laugh at myself and all of us Christian folk when we act surprised that the times are getting darker. Because didn't he say, right? But you may be able to withstand in the evil day. It says it right there. So praise God. Thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. Now, when I used to teach children's church on a regular basis, we used to do this uh, prophetic act with the kids. Um, teaching them to put on each piece of the armor. Um, you know that. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the shoes of peace, and hold up their sword of the spirit. We used to teach them that every time they get up in the morning to actually do that prophetic act of putting those things on, just like they do their uh, clothes, their natural clothes. And it's really powerful. We should all do that. Or at least have it in our heart. I mean, if y'all feel silly going. Because the kids would do it. You know how kids are. They would actually, ah, ah, ah. You know, it was amazing. It's powerful, though. It's not just a cute little fun thing. It works. But at least do it in your heart. Amen? It works. It does. Amen. Amen. So now um, I'm going to share a little about, about how we deal with each other. 
how we deal with people. Because we've talked about how we deal with um, the enemy and ourselves, our flesh. But how do we relate with other people? Whether it's brothers and sisters in Christ or people out, outside, on the, out there. CJ, could you give me a pen next, please? Thank you so much. See, we need each other. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I might start crying. No, we're good. Thank you, Jesus. Um, so one of the ways I believe the Lord shows me how we fight the good fight of faith with each other is by encouraging one another. Amen. Yeah? Amen. By helping one another. Amen. By teaching mentoring, discipling, supporting each other in our walks with the Lord, yeah. just like we're all doing right here. That is the purpose of the church, yeah. one of the purposes. And so um, when I was preparing for today in, in my quiet time with the Lord, I was reflecting back on my own life and how I grew up as a kid, and I realized that I have really been fighting in one way or another um, all my life. But before I had a relationship with the Lord, I was fighting in all the wrong ways, right? All the wrong ways, whether it was rebellion or drugs and alcohol, whatever worldly nonsense that I was into at the time, it was wrong. But then with Jesus, <laughs> man, and at that time he showed me, at that time what I was doing was I was fighting from a place of surviving, survival with a victim mentality. But Jesus changes all of that, right? He changes all of that. And he taught me, and he's still teaching me, still teaching me how to fight the good fight of faith from the place of victory that we've already won with the mindset that I'm an overcomer. Yes. And you're an overcomer. Yes. Why? Because the word says you are. Yes. Do we believe the word? Yes. We are overcomers. And so each one of us has an amazing testimony of what God did in us and through us, right? And we need to really be free, to be real enough to share that. I'm not from here, from, from Nevada. Most of you maybe only know me the way you see me. <laughs> well, let me tell you what, it's not, I had to grow through some things and be delivered from, from some things. And I think it's important that we humble ourselves and we're brave enough that we share and real enough to share the dirt that used to be there so that people can see that if they're still stuck in the very place that we used to be, Jesus can help them through just like he did us. Amen. Our testimonies are powerful and that's part of the way we fight the battle is through our testimonies, right? Yes. Thank you, Lord. So um, I love all the gifts of the Spirit all of the gifts of every single one. If the Lord says I can have it and I can do it, mm -hmm. I'm like, here I am, Lord. Yes. I receive that. And so should you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. But I, I think that the gift of encouragement is my favorite. And it's probably because I feel like it's the one... See, it's still a little hard for me to talk about myself. So. In a good way. Isn't that weird? I come against that in Jesus' name. Because it's the Lord. It's the Lord, not me. But I feel like the gift of encouragement is the one that flows through me supernaturally natural the most. I mean, what I don't even know I'm doing it. Amen. I, people are like, oh, you really encouraged me. I'm like, what? What did I say? I don't, you know what I mean? It just supernaturally naturally flows, and I don't even realize it. And you all have something like that, too. Yes, sir. A supernatural gift that you don't think about. You don't even realize sometimes when you're walking in it, it just flows. If you don't know what that is, ask him. <laughs> and he'll tell you. He'll tell you. It's so amazing. So praise God. Um, so that gift that the Lord gave me of encouragement, which so that comes from my mouth, right? Encouragement. It's really kind of trippy, very trippy, that he would give that to me. Because early on in my marriage, and Mike and I have been married 40 years. Woo! Praise the Lord. But early on in my marriage, Mike used to say to me, 
you fight like a dude. <laughs> he used to say, you fight like a guy. And he was, he's right. He was right. And what he meant was my mouth. Yeah. That, not that you guys all have bad mouths, but that you know what I'm saying. That's what he used to say. You fight like a dude. And he was talking about my mouth. So, good. So this real, we're going to talk about things too. So this really shows how God completely transforms people and brings them full circle, right? Because now my greatest gift that I didn't even know I had is encouraging people with my words. <laughs> oh, God's amazing. God's amazing. So, and if you don't think that encouragement, because I didn't really, because, you know, we think of the gifts of the Spirit the nine gifts, which, like I said, are amazing. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for them, that you give them to us in the moment needed, prophecy and healing and all of those. But encouragement? So if you don't think it's a gift, look it up on your own time in Romans 12. It's there. It's there. Thank you, Jesus. So um, let's talk about us some more people, people that we deal with, right? Strangers or friends. Strangers or friends. Because every person has value. Every single person has value. Um, that man on the street that everybody's passing by and nobody sees and stops for, he has value. He has purpose. The Lord loves him and the Lord has purpose for him. I just love that. Everybody has val value. God really, really, really cares about people. I mean, that's why he came, right? For relationship and family. Our relationship to him, of course, first, and then this way, our relationship one to another. So I asked the Lord one time, I said, what breaks your heart, Lord? What breaks your heart? <clears throat> be real careful if you ask that because go ahead. It's awesome and wonderful, but be ready for him to break your heart for what breaks his. Whatever he tells you, be ready for your own heart to be broken for that. Because his answer to me when I ask him that, what breaks his heart? And he said, the breach in relationships. The breach, the breakdown in relationships. Again, of course, first and foremost, foremost, ours to him, but also ours to each other. And not only our families and friends, but to that person that we don't even know, that stranger on the street. Sometimes a relationship is about, um, Decades, being together for decades. Sometimes a relationship is five minutes, and it counts. That five minutes with that stranger or whoever, it counts. <clears throat> I really believe that we're all called as believers to be the bridge that brings people together with Jesus and with one another because, y'all, there is nothing that Satan hates more than unity, because he knows that the power that it creates. If we were all really united in, the, in Christ Jesus, not only here, we are united here, praise God, and in Fernley, but I'm talking about beyond that, the global church, oh my, there's no defense against that, Hayton knows that, and that's why he's always trying to bring division and strife, praise the Lord. So when we come together as one body, it's like a one-two punch against the enemy. Amen? Amen? And then we are definitely fighting the good fight of faith effectively when we are in unity one to another. Amen? So we talked earlier about crucifying our flesh. Well, I had an opportunity to do that a while back. Actually, I probably have opportunity to do that every day, right? Yeah. <laughs> Crucify my flesh. I don't know about you guys, but I can usually see my flesh coming from a mile away. Which is good, because then that's the Lord giving me opportunity to get it in check. To remind it that it's dead and crucified. So I'm going to share something that happened in that area. <clears throat> so this particular time... I was outside working in my 
front yard. Sorry, I keep moving away from the mic. I hate mics. That's too bad news. I hate mics. Yes. Um, I was working outside in my front yard, and the neighbor boy was across the street playing some of his friends, and he decided to call me a name. Now, most of you have never seen this side of me, praise the Lord, I hope not, but left to my flesh, I could have gone real gangster on that young man, really quick, really, really quick, and it was a little startling to me, actually, because I felt my flesh rise up in a way that I hadn't felt in a while, right? For a minute, for a quick minute. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, so what I had to do at that moment, I had to pause, step back and inquire of the Lord and ask Holy Spirit to help me. Help me, Jesus, right? And he loves to hear that. He loves to hear that. And right in that moment, of course, he did help me. He reminded me that I was not that woman anymore, that I was a new woman filled with the power of God. And so what I did, Christopher, I looked at that boy with my mom look. <laughs> Chris is always talking about my mom look, whatever. I looked at him, but this, I feel like this is what the Holy Spirit led me to do. I looked at him with my mom looked, and I said, oh, I must have heard you wrong. Well, this young boy got the most surprised, confused look on his face, and he just rode off on his bike. Confused, right? Much like how worship confuses the enemy. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. So that was amazing. But the really amazing thing about that whole situation happened the next day. Because the next day at the food pantry, I was there ministering, and who walks in? Oh my gosh. My neighbor boy with his mom and his grandpa. Yep. I had never seen them there before, ever. And this was back in the day when people came into the pantry to get their foods from tables. I had never seen him there before, but there he was. And he saw me first, and he got this really scared look on his face. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he thought I was going to tell on him now or something. I don't know. But he did. Ooh. So what I did, because the Lord had already dealt with my heart in that area the day before. What I did was I walked from behind my table. I went over to them, and I said, hi, neighbors. Welcome to the food pantry. Oh, right? right? And the mom and I started talking, and um, I could tell that there was something she was struggling with, you know. And uh, so I asked her if there was anything I could do for her, and she began sharing these really personal, troubling things, some of which were directly affecting her son, right? Um, and he was still just standing there with his mouth hanging open, <laughs> wondering, you know, wondering what, what was going to do, what he was going to do. So I ministered to her for a while, and then I asked if I could pray for them, and she said yes. So I turned to the boy, and I put my hand on his heart, and I began praying directly to him. I began speaking directly to him what the Lord saw in him, right? Um, he started crying. Mom started crying, grandpa started crying, everybody's crying, you know, and it was just amazing, tears of praise and release. They were tears of, for that family, they were tears of release. So I, I realized in that moment, though, how differently that whole situation would have played out yes. had I fought using, the day before, yes. if I had fought using the weapons of the world instead of being led by the Holy Spirit, that whole thing would have not gone the way it was supposed to go. So praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So um, let's go to 2 Corinthians 10.4. 2 Corinthians 10.4, which tells us how and how we can do that. How can we be led by the Holy Spirit and not our own feelings in the moment and in the flesh. Because I'm not saying any of this is easy, especially no. when something's right in your face. Yeah. Yeah. But it is possible. Yes. 
because the Lord helps us. He equips us for it. So 2 Corinthians 10.4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down strongholds. See, because I even had some strongholds, I realized that I hadn't dealt with in years that I had to still deal with. If a name can cause my flesh to rise up like that, yeah. there's something in me that needs to be checked with the Lord, right? Yes. So it wasn't, and it never is, it wasn't just about the young boy and his family, it was about me too, and it always is. That's it. It's always about everybody who's involved, not just one, right? That's the truth. Um, but I do believe that on that day, because I chose to fight right, God's way, that some strongholds in that young boy's mind were torn down. I know they were. Hallelujah. He went from looking at me with hate, because maybe because the world tells him that he's supposed to. Some people hate and they don't even know why. Right. Oh my gosh, that's right, Dallas. They don't even know why they're hating me. They just hate. Amen. So he went, I believe he went from doing that to receiving ministry and prayer and the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. And now, when we see each other, we're good neighbors. We're, we have a good relationship together. So that's awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. All the time. All the time. All the time. Whoops. So, um, for those of you who know me well, you know that the Holy Spirit always shows me his kingdom as a circle. Right? You've heard me say that. I love circles. And it's the kingdom circle, right? Which is passing the anointing one to another. So listen to this. You've probably heard this before, but it's powerful. You've got one candle and it burns bright, but when you put another beside it and another and another, they illuminate off each other. And when the flames touch, <laughs> when the flames touch, they grow into one mighty fire of light and strength, which is a mighty force of God's power and love that cannot be contained. And it's all for his purpose. It's all for his glory. And it's how we fellowship in the anointing together. Y'all are all anointed. You have Holy Spirit inside of you. You all are anointed. And when we come together with each of our unique anointings, man, it's powerful. So we need to encourage each other in that. We need to encourage each other in the gifts and the anointings that God gave us. That's how, that's another way we fight the good fight of faith. Because the Bible speaks about women encouraging other women, such as Mary, the mother of Jesus, going to visit her cousin Elizabeth, right, after the angelic visitation. Elizabeth had the discernment and the spiritual maturity to affirm Mary in her calling and the Apostle Paul encouraged Timothy all the time in yes. his calling. Yes. We need to do that one to each other. And I am just, I just have to say, I thank God so much for Pastor Matt and Regina because they always encourage us in our walk with the Lord. Amen. Always. Amen. And it's so important. Amen. It's so important. So God saw fit to team people up in pairs or sometimes groups. He designed people to be in each other's lives as part of a biblically supportive community. When a person is alone, this is how we don't fight. <clears throat> when a person is alone, their mind can easily become the playground of the devil. Right? I've been there. Now, I'm not talking about alone, like a lone, personal, intimate time with the Lord. That is crucial for all of us. But I'm talking about isolating. That is the devil's playground. Don't do it. Because there's no voice of accountability. Uh, there's no one who will, will walk beside you uh, and help us along the way, help to uh, pray with us, help us from making wrong decisions. Sometimes we're so close to something, we can't see it. So I need one of you to come alongside and show me sometimes or help me to get my way back to the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, helping each other, teaching each other, encouraging each other, praying for and with each other, enrich all our lives with relationships that will feed our souls while fulfilling God's purpose on earth. The things that feed our souls from the Lord fulfill his purpose on earth. So can you imagine 
I can imagine. I can only imagine. I can imagine. Can you imagine a world where every person wakes up knowing their purpose? I'm every person. What does the word say that none should perish? When I talk about people, I have, I'm talking about every single solitary person in this world God so loves. Every person. Can you imagine if every person would wake up every morning knowing their purpose from God? And more than that, even more than that, because this is what we need, they each, each one of them has a friend who believes in them and who will invest in their potential to change the world for Christ. Can you imagine? That's the Lord's heart. I believe that's his design. Because when we compete with each other, we're deviating from God's design, right? Um, but when we help each other, we can reach more by coming together with one another than we could ever accomplish on our own, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's how we fight as a Christian, because that's what it's about, right? Ultimately, why we're still here and not in heaven already is because we're supposed to tell people about Jesus, because he wants every single person, and things come against us to stop that. But how we fight back like a Christian is to come together. Amen? Amen? So we have to remember not to ever take out the friend in front. I don't know where I heard this, but I thought it was kind of cute. Yeah, let's not take out the friend in friendship or the fellow in fellowship. Because friend and fellow refer to people. Yes. Hallelujah. So we love ministry. I love ministry. I remember the very first time Pastor Matt called me a minister years ago. I was like, but it's true. We love the Lord. The word says for all his disciples, that's us, to do these things. So it's true. We're all ministers, and I love ministry. I think we have to be careful um, that we don't love ministry more than we love people because the ministry is about people. It's all about people coming to know the Lord, right? So um, I'm going to read... Romans 15, 1 through 7, if you want to go there. I'm going to read it from the Message Bible. I don't have the Message Bible, but every now and again, the Lord, he knows best. I don't. Every now and again, he leads me to that. And I think that this word is really brought out. So Romans 15, 1 through 7. says, living with others in mind. Those of you who are strong and able in the faith need to step in and lend a hand to those who falter. And not just to do what is most convenient for you. Strength is for service, not status. Each one of us needs to look for the good of the people around us, asking ourselves, how can I help? That's exactly what Jesus did. He didn't make it easy for himself by avoiding people's troubles or by avoiding people who were different than him. But he waded right in, right in the middle of it, right in the thick of it, and helped out. I took on the troubles of the troubled, is the way scripture puts it. Even if it was written in scripture long ago, you can be sure it's written for us. God wants the combination of his steady, constant calling and warm personal counsel in scripture to come to characterize us, keeping us alert for whatever he will do next. For whatever he will do next. May our deep, dependably, steady and warmly personal God develop maturity in us so that we get along with each other as well as Jesus gets along with all of us. <laughs> then we'll be a choir. Not our voices only, but our very lives, singing in harmony in a stunning anthem to the God and Father of our Master Jesus. So reach out and welcome one another to God's glory. Jesus did it, now you do it too. Amen. That's Romans. 15, 1 through 7 in the Message Bible. Amen? Amen. 
So um, fighting like a Christian means that we don't ever let opportunity to mentor or disciple someone pass us by. Just because they don't look like us or sound like us uh, the way we think they should, that could be the very reason that God brought them to you. Because if we're going to reach the people for Christ, then we have to touch them with Christ, with his heart, his ways. Yeah. Amen? Oh, amen? I love the fruit. We talked a little bit about the fruit, uh, uh, the gifts of the Spirit, which I absolutely love. But we can't have those without the fruit of the Spirit. I love the fruit of the Spirit, too, which is love, joy, peace. Patience. Some um, versions say long suffering. Long suffering. <laughs> Sometimes. Oh, Faith. Like that. Goodness <laughs> and gentleness. Meekness and self control. Did y'all know you could control yourselves? Mm -hmm. The word says we can, so we can, right? Yes. If you need help, remember, we just ask Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Those three words all day sometimes, I'm like, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. And he does every time. Every time. Um, this is how we fight like a Christian. And I know that a lot of us are really on fire. We talk about it. We pray about it, about revival that's here, right? So the Lord showed me that this speaks of that harvest of souls that's coming and this continual growing revival that's already here because when we welcome people, all people, with open hands and open hearts, <clears throat> with the love of the Lord, that's when true revival comes, no matter what. We cannot and we are not. We are not the church that recoils back. We are not, right? We're not like Jonah. There is no place in this revival for Jonah's. I don't mean, it was, it, he was probably awesome. He did awesome and amazing things as well. All, like all of this, right? The bad and the good. But the part that we cannot model after Jonah is how, when he was told to go somewhere, Nineveh, yeah. I feel like what I got from that scripture is he didn't want to go because he felt like those people were too far gone. That's right. We cannot, uh, and we do not ever think that, because there's nobody who's too far gone for Jesus to receive the love of the Lord and be saved. Nobody. Okay, sorry. <laughs> do I have the wrong face? Sorry. No, I'm not sorry, actually. I'm not sorry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So the Holy Spirit strategically places each one of us, his sons and daughters, um, in specific situations for his purpose, right? To show his goodness, his love, his light. And because of the Holy Spirit inside of each one of us, we have the power to change the atmosphere around us. Yeah. Amen. And how do we do that? By manifesting the opposite of whatever's going on. If there's chaos, then we as believers better be in peace when there's chaos in, in around you that's the time for you to manifest peace in Jesus name if there's anger then we show love and on and on right and it really does work I've been in those situations a lot and it does it changes the atmosphere around us and hopefully it changes the atmosphere within us and within the people that are there. Yes. Amen? We are all atmosphere changers as we fight the good fight of faith. Amen? Amen. So I want to share quickly. I had a vision a while back. Um, um, and it, huh? Second that dominant. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And it was, sorry. I see why Regina uses two and three stands. Remember how she does? Because we need space to spread everything out. I'm kidding. I'm fine. So this vision that I had was of um, a rushing, some of you will remember because I think I shared, it was a rushing river rising up and a consuming fire coming down. And when they touched each other, 
When they touched each other, they became one. Now the water was still wet and the fire was still hot, but they were one because they touched each other. And I believe um, from that vision, the Holy Spirit was saying that his sons and daughters, as we move together as his body in all of our unique diversities, right? Yes. Fully quenched and fully consumed to reach the lost and the broken so that all will come to receive Jesus on their own. That's when we're most effective. That's when we're fighting the good fight of faith like a Christian. Amen? Because we really are better together. We really are. Um, and it's God's plan. So there's different, we talked about this before, there are definitely different anointings, but I feel like the greatest anointing comes when we actually touch each other with our uniquenesses and we become one for God's purpose. Don't worry about, oh, well, this one, she, this, and I wish I could that, and he, this. Find out what God's put inside of you and then bring it. We all bring what God's given us, right? The anointing, the gifts, the strengths. Bring your weakness as well because we know what happens then, right? But as we all bring that to the Lord, that's when we're the most powerful. The greatest level of glory in Christ Jesus we have ever experienced is going to be revealed through a people of unity, serving one another and honoring one another, which we're all doing here. Praise the Lord. We never look more like Jesus. We never look more like Jesus than when we are in unity as brothers and sisters in Christ, loving people. So, um, thank you, Jesus. We, we also need to know that encouragement isn't about stuffing our feelings, because I know that we all have stuff that we uh, deal with, feelings, emotions, things happen, and they're real. We don't stuff them. We're not ruled by them. We are absolutely not ruled by our feelings. But we can't just stuff them down and ignore them and pretend. This is not about pretending. Amen? Amen. Because sooner or later, they're all going to explode anyway. And it's probably not going to be pretty at all. It's going to be a hot mess. Okay. So instead, what we do, this is how. This is another how we fight the good fight. Instead, we ask Holy Spirit to help us. It says in Ephesians 4, 26, to be angry, but don't sin, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So that tells me that anger, that feeling of anger, isn't necessarily bad. It's what we do with it, yes. how we respond to it, yes. right? Yes. So encouragement, again, is not ignoring our problems or pretending, and it's absolutely not vain flattery. Don't do that. People don't need that. They don't need your vain flattery. They need the truth of God's word, the truth of what God says about them and how he sees them. It's speaking life into people in every circumstance by speaking the truth and the love of God's word. Truth and love. I think Mike would mention that earlier. Truth and love have to go together. You can't separate them. You can't separate them. You shouldn't. Amen. And so what this means is that we have to be in the word, to know the word, to speak the word, to share the word, and to live the word. Again, we have to be in the word, the word of God, to know the word of God, to speak the word of God in order to share the word and live the word. Because this is our guide. So there's going to be times of correction, of course, and, and a delegated training for all of us. But as leaders, and I feel like we're all leaders here in some way or another, each one of us, um, as leaders who follow Christ, we follow his example, and Jesus always leads with love. So if I'm feeling some kind of way about something, you know, if I'm feeling... Um, frustrated or angry, I need to take a step back, you know? I need to take that pause before I try to lead anyone, just for a moment. Now, these pauses and these step backs, it's not like a long, drawn-out thing that you have to do and you have to go away and you have to fast for it, unless the Lord tells you to. But 
you know, like ask for it for a long time and and tear your clothes. Uh, you know, but it's it's just these pauses that I'm talking about are they're momentary. They're they're very quick as long as you're inquiring of the Lord in that pause. Okay, what is it? How can I readjust here? And He'll show you. He does every time. And I think that there's a um, what the Lord showed me was that there's a counterfeit belief that in order to lead with authority, that we have to maintain somewhat of a harsh exterior, right? And I think the word authority, at least in this case, isn't even accurate because we don't have authority over people, right? right? right. We don't have authority over people. Let's go to Luke 10, 19, really quick. Luke 10, 19. see what we have authority over. 10.19 says, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Did you hear that? Yeah. The Lord gives us power over all. How much? all the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. So we need to walk in that authority. That's how we fight. That's how we fight like a Christian. It's not people. Thank you, Jesus. So maybe in this instance, when we're talking about people, instead of using the word authority, maybe we should use the word respect or influence. Maybe perhaps that's a better word when we're dealing with other people. Because there are bosses, leaders. I mean, you have yeah, Pastor Matt, or Pastor Leader, and I have a boss at work, and I'm a pa I'm a mom, so in my hat, no, but you know, and I have my husband who is who is um, spiritual leader of our house. So there are different levels, but I think instead of authority, the word might be better described as respect and influence in how we use with how we deal with those people. But as leaders, any kind of leader, and again, y'all are leaders in some way. Um, we must know that leading with a harsh exterior is ultimately not going to be effective. Right. It's just not. It's the world's way, but it's not Jesus' way. Right? So uh, let's go to Proverbs 15.1. Proverbs 15.1. And this is why leading with a harsh exterior is never going to ultimately be effective. 15.1 says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Right? Yes. <sighs> so pouring God's goodness into others is our greatest calling. I feel like pouring God's goodness, his love, his truth into others is our greatest calling. Because the word says that it's the goodness of God. It's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance and draws them to Jesus. Amen? Amen. So that's how we fight. The good fight of faith like a Christian. Um, and I've been involved. I've had my sh fair share of... Uh, situations, we'll call them situations, where I've been involved in some very disturbing encounters with other people. People that I love and respect and do life with even. And what I learn from each one of those disturbing encounters was that when I remember to take that pause and ask Holy Spirit what is really going on right now in this situation and how I should respond and get quiet before the Lord. And remember, all of this is in an instant, in a moment, yeah. as Diane said. It's, yeah. it's right there in the heat of it. Not going home and do, doing it. Right there. You, right there while it's happening. And when we do that, then clarity and peace and unity returns. Right? Yes. Because it says in Romans 12, 18, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, Live at peace with everyone. 
as far as it depends on you, right? Yes. And in, in Ephesians 4.32, it says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. So, y'all, we just need to do our part yes. as far as it depends on us. Just do your part and trust God with the rest, right? That's how we fight, the right way. Um, so as brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to be able to have those hard conversations. It's okay to have a hard conversation with somebody, to bring truth in love, to allow the Lord to truly sharpen iron. Iron sharpens iron. Right? To let him truly do that, which involves both people. You're not going to, the Holy Spirit is not going to sharpen their iron without also sharpening yours. He just doesn't do that in any situation. And then to realize that we can have conflict with one another, disagreements, and even confrontations without any offense or division entering in. None. It doesn't have to enter in. You don't have to have offense just because you have a conflict, right. right? Conflict has the ability to divide or bring us closer together. And it depends how, on how each one of us choose, yes. right? How we choose to respond, how we choose to grow. And by the way, we're all still growing. Each and every one of us, we're all still Amen. I feel like we're forever growing until Jesus comes back yeah. or we go to heaven, whichever's first. We're for all of us forever growing. So as, we, and so in that, since we're all still growing, what we're doing is we have to each remember, no matter how much you know or how anointed you are, we are each one of us fully walking as teacher and student at the same time, at the same time. We can never assume to be able to rightly assess someone or our relationship with them based on an incident. Come on. We can only rightly assess each other through the journey of a walk together. Yes. <clears throat> if we truly want to walk as sons and daughters of God, then we must continue to grow as brothers and sisters. Did you know that? The Lord told me once before I can ever walk as a I'm always his daughter. You're always his daughter. You're always his son. But if, before we can truly walk here as a son or a daughter of God, we have to learn to walk as brothers and sisters first. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as powerful as what we are doing here, here in this house, is, I want us to consider the importance of continuing Continuing to be people who also reach out to people who are not in our circle. Amen? Yes. Amen. Um, a while back, I led a women's ministry in my home for several years. And um, when the Lord first told me to do that, he said to make a safe place for all women. All women. So I had believers and unbelievers. I had people from Living Faith and other churches, some tongue talking, some not, you know. I even asked my neighbor, um, who was lit most of the time, to come because the Lord told me to, right? I, I'm not saying that um, this is everyone's calling, but I was absolutely led to do that. But what I am saying is that you are all called to reach out to the unreachable in some way, to the unlovely to the inconvenient, whatever the label is. We're all called to reach out. Ask God, and he'll show you who. And every day, it can be somebody different every day. It's such an adventure when you ask the Lord to show you, right? Yes. Um, I also believe that we don't need to be concerned. Now, this is, this is good. God is so good. Man, oh, man. I also believe that what he was showing me was that we don't need to be concerned about God keeping us safe from the world. It's dark and it's evil. True. But we don't need to be concerned about him keeping us safe from that. 
Or in some cases, we don't even need to be concerned about him keeping us safe from other believers. Ooh, come on. But what God is desiring, what God is desiring um, to do is make us safe for the world. Amen. You get that? He's trying to make us safe for the world and safe for one another so that as he brings people to us and as he sends us out, and remember that out is that go, it's across the room, across town, across the world, whichever the go is, when he sends us, he will have already created that safe place in us for all to receive what he has purposed. We have to be approachable. We have to be like Jesus. He's our example, right? <clears throat> so as long as there is any possibility that something God does in and through me will draw that person, that group of people, that territory closer to Jesus and his truth, his light and his love, I will not break connection. Now there's boundaries. There's boundaries, absolutely. And there's godly wisdom. But be mindful not to confuse wisdom with suspicion. They're not cousins. They're not related at all. And we don't confuse guarding our hearts with hardening our hearts. Again, they're not cousins. They're not related. We have to use discernment to hear the heart of what God is saying. Because it's not even really the presence of darkness and evil or persecution that should be our concern. It's the absence of light and truth and love, right? As we bring that to every circumstance and to every people, we carry the victory already won. We have to go led by the Holy Spirit, absolutely. And that's what, and that's what it says. We are to leave ourselves open for the Holy Spirit. Leave ourselves open for the Holy Spirit to move in and through us, however, wherever, and whenever he chooses for his purpose and his glory. Amen? Amen? He knows. He knows when hearts are softened to receive. He knows when they're ready to be transformed. He knows. Therefore, we remain ready. Right? We, we, we remain ready and completely surrender to the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us every step of the way, to be his conduit, to be his bridge of connection between Jesus and the people he loves, which is all people. You know, I thank God every day for his faithfulness to never give up on me. Yes. Amen. I would have given up on me. Yes. Oh, Amen. my goodness. And I am grateful for the thankfulness of those people that he continues to use on my behalf. So we're going to remain faithful to do the same for others, right? Oh. Um, I, that's our calling. I believe that's our calling. And it is how we fight the good fight of faith. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So we're almost done. I'm going to share one more vision with you that really speaks of this. It's really cool. I saw once, God showed me once, uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds of people, and they were all walking together. Their arms and their legs and their feet were all moving in the same rhythm, right? One person would fall beside would fall down and someone would reach over and pick them up. Another person would fall behind, someone would reach back and pick them up. Another person would fall ahead, someone would reach ahead and pick them up. All the while, the forward movement together never missed a beat. Amen? Now, I spoke that word originally um, with the pastors at our E412 ministry, which is amazing. If you should all go if we ever have it again. It's awesome. But I shared that there one time. And this really shows what I was talking about earlier about how you each, we each bring our own anointing from the Lord. And we bring it and we, we're together in it, right? So I shared what I just shared with you, that vision. And then as I was sharing, Pastor Kurt from Destiny said that he saw each person not only helping each other up, but also carrying people on their shoulders. 
Remember that? Then Pastor Rick from Living Water said, yeah. And you know, when we carry each other on our shoulders, our feet are planted even deeper in fertile ground. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So it says in Galatians 6, 2 that we carry, to carry each other's burdens. Galatians 6, 2 says to carry each other's burdens. And we know that means to carry them to the Lord. Right? Remember, we have our part and we trust God for the rest. We carry those burdens to the Lord on behalf of our brothers and sisters. Right? And it says in Mark 12, I think this is our last scripture, so if you want to go there. Mark 12, 30 and 31. <clears throat> Says, this is, well, sorry, well, I was going to say this is my favorite scripture, but I say that about a lot of scriptures. <laughs> it's not, I mean, my favorite scripture is actually, um, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. But this scripture in, what I say? Help me, help me. Thank you. Mark 12, 30 and 31. I feel like it's the scripture if, and, and all of scripture is true and good and it's a complete word and we need it all. It works together. But I've often felt that this scripture in Mark if you had to pull one out that kind of brought everything together, it would be this, like on, for what our part is, right? And it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Love God and love people. Love God and love people. It is really so simple, but so profoundly important, right? Love God, love people. And the word even says in that scripture that there is no commandment greater than that one. Yeah, love God, love people. Amen. Yeah. So we're all blessed to be part of the body of Christ who truly desires to walk these things out. We are so blessed for that. And as we uh, are now in the time of greater with this, with this revival that's continuing and it's going to grow and grow. The time of greater, greater vision, greater growth, greater kingdom expansion. We need to be mindful to continue forward. Be mindful to continue forward. Somebody said earlier, do not grow weary. That's true. Do not grow weary in well-doing. Why? Because we're going to reap a harvest if we don't give up. So we can't give up just because it's dark and ugly. That's where we need to be in the dark and ugly, ugly to bring the light, yes. to bring the truth and the love of the Lord, right? Thank you, Jesus. So um, let us be mindful to go forward in an even greater way on an even deeper and higher level. Don't you love the kingdom of God? It's the only place where you can go deeper and higher yeah. at the same time, right? It's, the truth. it's so good. To always, so we always need to choose well to respond well, to represent Jesus well, to fight the good fight of faith well. Doing life together, speaking life into one another, encouraging one another, coming alongside and supporting each other, forgiving and loving each other, just like Jesus forgives and loves us, yes. right? Yes. Teaching, learning, discipling, listening, listening, listening helping one another up when we struggle or fall, and even carrying one another at times is the true fellowship of worship unto the Lord. And it is how we fight like a Christian because no matter how dark and evil the world gets, the enemy has absolutely no defense against love in action, God's love in action. So stay encouraged. Whether... Your battle is personal, whether the battle is corporate, whether it's global. We battle from the place of victory already won. Because ultimately, the battle does belong to the Lord. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to close with this declaration that I have. Um, it speaks of the armor of God that we talked about earlier. If you, if you feel led to stand up and to de declare this with me, feel free to do that. 
or sit and declare however you choose. But this is what we're saying today. This is what we're declaring today. Heavenly Father, your warriors prepare for battle. Today, we claim victory over Satan by putting on the whole armor of God. We put on the girdle of truth. May we stand firm in the truth of your word. So we will not be victims of Satan's lies. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. May it guard our hearts from evil so we will remain pure and holy, protected under the blood of Jesus Christ. We put on the shoes of peace. May we stand firm in the good news of the gospel so your peace will shine through us and be a light to all we encounter. We take the shield of faith. May we be ready for Satan's fiery darts of doubt, denial, and deceit. So we will not be vulnerable to spiritual defeat. We put on the helmet of salvation. May we guard our minds and keep them focused on you so that Satan will not have a stronghold on our thoughts. And we take the sword of the spirit. May the two-edged sword of your word be ready in our hands and coming out of our mouths so we can expose the tempting words of Satan by praising his holy name. By faith, your warriors have put on the whole armor of God, and we are prepared to live this day in spiritual victory. Yes. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That was a beautiful word. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the word, yes. the beautiful word that you brought. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. I, we believe that your word has penetrated our hearts, and we're going to leave here changed. Remember, yes. Remembering that wherever we go, whatever's going around, around, on around us, that we have your Holy Spirit living inside of yes. us, helping yes. us every moment of the day. Let us live in your presence. Father God, let us remain in your presence, fully equipped for whatever you bring us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for showing us how to fight the good fight of faith, to fight like a Christian, to show your love and your truth to all people, Father God, so that no one will be left out, no one will be forgotten or overlooked, but all will come to know you as Lord and Savior. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Jesus. So, Father God, we thank you for this fisherman's net. Yeah, we thank you that you've given us um, seed to sow. Yes. We believe it's going in fertile ground. Yes. Yes. Help us every day. Remind us. Show us yes. who we can bless by the blessings that you give us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So as that's going around, <laughs> so as that's going around, if anybody needs prayer for anything, um, I'm just going to go ahead and come on up, sweetie. I'm going to go ahead and say this because looking around, I think everybody here is already saved, but the Lord put it on my heart. So perhaps it's somebody listening, right? Because, what it, because of what Joe does, which is amazing, this goes everywhere. So if there's somebody that hasn't received the Lord into their heart as their Lord and Savior, even if you're just listening, you can do that now, today, right now. I believe Pastor Jeannie even said she was saved through the TV. Yeah. So right now, I just, it's really strong in my heart. There's somebody, if it's not in this room, then maybe it's on the thing. To receive Jesus in their heart right now, right today, don't wait. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you, and he has a perfect plan for you. So if anybody else needs prayer here, come on up, and we'll pray for you. God bless you all. Yes. So, Father God, thank you for that, Pastor Matt. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, that you are touching hearts right now. You are softening hearts to receive you. So for whoever is listening to this message, Lord, no matter where they are, what they're doing, 
touch them right now. Open up their hearts to feel your presence. Holy Spirit, come upon them and let them choose you. Let them give their hearts to you. Let them know that they don't have to do anything right now except say, yes, Jesus. Come into my heart. I believe that you are the son of God. You died for my sins, and I want to make you Lord and Savior of my life. So come in and, and be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.